Professional wrestling icon John Cena hosted Saturday Night Live a few years back. It was one of the early signs that his appeal had crossed from the ring into the larger popular culture. A 16-time WWE champion whose signature move is the attitude adjustment, Cena is the face of wrestling entertainment and a hero to legions of young fans who live by his motto, never give up. But he also has a budding movie career, and he writes best-selling children's books for those kids who love him about a family of monster trucks. John and I got together here in New York for a Sunday sit-down. In the ring, John Cena is a menacing, muscle-bound force. You can't see me. Outside the ropes, though, he is a gentleman, kind and generous, with all those muscles hidden under a well-tailored suit. I feel like you've always dressed well, but you've outdressed me again, and I bow to your three-piece suit. <laughs> You're a little more cat. We know here we are yeah, with the Chesterfields and exactly. books and coffee. And exactly. I show up looking like I'm going to trade Banana Futures, <laughs> and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Cena's new children's book, Elbow Grease vs. Motozilla, is the latest in his best-selling series. It focuses on the value at the core of his success, perseverance. How did you set out on this project and this journey? What did you want to say? So it, all, it actually all starts with uh, WWE. All of these young kids were drawn to this philosophy of never giving up. I chose a family of monster trucks because I grew up with four brothers and we kind of each have our distinct personality of like one being super intelligent and one being super crazy and one being super fast. And then there's uh, Elbow Grease who is different and whose outstanding quality is perseverance and never giving up. Does that make you, because there are five monster trucks in yeah. here, you have five, five yes. boys in your family, Yes. are you elbow grease? 100% I am elbow grease. I've never really been uh, outstanding at anything except sticking with something. So uh, it's a message I, I really wanted to send. The 42-year-old Cena was raised in West Newbury, Massachusetts, the second of those five brothers. I have lost my share of, of fights in my day. Hmm. So I, I know what it feels like to be knocked down, but I also know what it feels like to get back up. You know, um, we, we was a very, very competitive household. And something is like dinner time when they set the food down. There's five of us, and it was a competition to eat. Professional wrestling was big in the Cena household, and like a lot of kids at the time, John idolized the biggest star in the game, Hulk Hogan. This was when the, then WWF yep. became larger than life, truly became a national and on its way to becoming a global phenomenon. And Hulkamania hit in the mid 80s. I was a Hulkamania. I, I, yeah. I think if you were a, a child of the 80s, you, that's it's an icon you looked up to. John took up bodybuilding and earned a spot on the football team at Springfield College, where he became an All-American offensive lineman. After graduating with a degree in exercise physiology, Cena set his sights on the fitness mecca of Venice Beach, California. I remember my dad in, in what I still think maybe a brilliant reverse psychology move was like, yeah, go ahead, you'll never last more than two weeks. And perseverance kicked in and I was like, first of all, I'm going. Second of all, two weeks, I'll be back whenever I want. Like, I knew I was gonna last longer. At 21, he talked his way into a job at the world-famous Gold's Gym. At one point, I didn't have enough money to do anything else except live in the back of my 91 Lincoln Continental and use the gym as like a home because I would work all day there, and Gold's was open from 4 a.m. to midnight. Oh, wow. So I would work as many hours as I could to make as much money as I could because I loved the place. Knowing Cena's passion for wrestling, friends told him about a nearby training academy that talked the secrets of the profession. I was like, what? You can be a, a wrestler? <laughs> I, I, then I didn't know that there was like schools and a path to action. It right. just wasn't publicized. So immediately I said yes. Cena was a natural. In 2001, he signed with what was then called the World Wrestling Federation, now WWE. Over 17 years, he became the biggest star in professional wrestling, with young kids as his biggest fans. You can literally tell by the pitch. The pitch of those people cheering for me is a higher pitch, and the pitch of those people despising me is a low adult male pitch. So it's kind of telling you like, hey, you could try to convince these people, but they're gonna be a hard sell. 
why not just cater to the people who already enjoy you? I've had parents literally being like, listen, I hate you. <laughs> and I'm the one who's booing you out there. But keep doing what you're doing because my kid loves you. You can't see me. I don't want to give away any secrets as a fan of wrestling, but I think people watching are interested of like how it works behind the scenes. Yeah. You've got a big match against somebody. Are you guys talking before the match? Well, or how does you, it work? You're, um, I, I appreciate the respect, but essentially WWE has, has come to grips with what it is. So we are sports entertainment, and the most rewarding feeling is when you can craft a narrative that has the live audience on the edge of I, uh, their goosebumps under, like, under my coat right now. Performing in front of an audience that knows what you are doing is entertainment. But for that one moment in time, making them believe. And that's why every time, I and mean, I'm working myself up into a frenzy right now, but every time I come out of that ramp on WWE, I am amped. In 2015, Cena leapt into a new world with a critically acclaimed performance in the hit Amy Schumer comedy, Trainwreck. Mark Wahlberg, shut up. Mark Wahlberg's like 150 pounds. I look like Mark Wahlberg ate Mark Wahlberg. More jobs follow, including a leading role last year in Bumblebee, the sixth installment of the Transformers movies. Hey, soldier. Cena will star next year in Fast and Furious 9, joining the blockbuster franchise family that includes the superstar wrestler turned actor who blazed the trail for Cena. Stretch him out, hold him. There are a lot of people who've watched your moves, Hollywood moves over the last few years and thought, oh, I see, he's going down the Dwayne Johnson path. Yeah, to say that I want to emulate the career of Dwayne Johnson is, is true in some aspects because he was brave enough to be the first one to be like, no, we are more. And damn it, I'm going down swinging and I'm gonna prove that we are more. But I also know that if, if you are a copy of someone, that is all that you will be. And right now, the now generation of WWE is dealing with who will be the next John Cena. And my hat's off to them, they take the same approach as I did. I'm not gonna be the next anybody, I'm gonna be the, the first me. Good advice. John's new book, Elbow Grease vs. Motozilla, is available on Tuesday. His next movie, Playing With Fire, co-starring Keegan-Michael Key and John Leguizamo, comes out on November the 8th. Our big thanks to Ground Central here in New York for hosting our conversation. And as we talk about John Cena's impact on kids, it's worth noting that over the years he has granted more than 600 wishes to children for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. That is more than twice as many as anyone else ever has. To hear John talk more about how Dwayne The Rock Johnson, his one-time rival in WWE, became his career inspiration, check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit-Down Podcast to hear the entire unedited interview with John Cena. You can find it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours.